this is the coping saw, one of my favorite tools, because it's so light and easy to use once you get the hang of it. Plus, it's incredibly versatile. You can cut curves, straight lines, and into tight corners, and so you can make lots of fun projects with this one saw. In this video, I'll show you about the care and maintenance of the coping saw, and then I'll show you how to use it, particularly with some techniques to help children gain control of the saw and use it all on their own. There are three main parts to the coping saw. The handle, the spring, and the blade. These parts connect the blade to the spring and to the handle. The most important part of the coping saw when it comes to a child using it is the handle. And here you see three types of handles. These two are really easy for adults to use because they're pretty large. But this one, even though this saw was the least expensive of these three saws, is the very best for children because the handle is smaller. It really comes down to the size of your hand. If your hand is small, you're going to need a small handle. Most coping saws come with a blade that looks like this. It has 20 teeth per inch. It's super fine, made for cutting very thin wood. But we're cutting thicker wood when we're making the projects that I show you in these videos. So you need a blade that looks like this one here. This one is 10 teeth per inch. I'm going to show you how to change the blade in the coping saw so you can have the right blade to do the job. Before changing the blade, it's really important to know which way the teeth should be facing. They need to point towards the handle because you pull up on the coping saw to make it work. If the teeth face away from the handle, it won't work very well. Unfortunately, many times when you buy a coping saw, the teeth are pointing the wrong direction. You also need to know about how this part of the coping saw works. There's a slot for the blade and there's a hook for a little cleat that runs through the blade. Now we're ready to change the blade. I'm going to pinch this part with my forefinger and my thumb. I'm going to wrap my fingers around the spring. Now I can hold the saw securely and I can unscrew the handle. I unscrew it until the blade is quite loose. I don't unscrew it all the way though. There, it's almost all the way unscrewed. The blade is quite loose. Now I'm gonna move to a surface such as this bench. I wanna put it onto a surface that I don't care about too much because I'm going to push down. I push down with the handle and that loosens the blade the rest of the way. Carefully, I pinch the blade and I remove the cleats from the hooks and then I do the same on the other end. To install the blade, first I check, are the teeth facing the handle? Then I can put the blade into the slot and hooks on the bottom part of the coping saw. I can pinch it while I take the saw to a surface, such as the bench. I can push down on it a little bit. I match the top part of the blade into the slot and hooks on the top while I push down on the handle and ease that blade into the cleat. Now I can tighten the handle, again, pinching this tab and wrapping my fingers around the spring. I'll tighten it up as tight as I can. I do not want the saw loosening up. There, we've changed the blade on the coping saw. Now that we have the correct blade installed, we are ready to use the saw. For big kids, it works best to hold on with one hand like this, to shake hands with the saw so your palm can push the saw in the direction of the blade. For younger kids, it works better to hold on with two hands, one hand on the handle, one hand on the spring. And here we are, we're ready to saw. I've drawn a line, I've made my sandwich. The line's about two fingers off the end of the bench. You notice the C-clamp has the handle underneath the bench. If the handle is above the bench when you're using the coping saw, it's going to get in your way. So it's best to have the handle under the bench for the coping saw. Whether the child is holding the saw like this or like this, 
the principle is the same. They need to be going up and down a whole lot while gently pushing in the direction they want to go, steering by twisting the handle. We don't twist the handle or push unless we're going up and down a lot or we, or we can twist up the blade and the blade will break. So if the child is holding the saw like this, you might want somebody to be sitting on the bench because the bench tends to vibrate and move around a bit and that can be really frustrating for a little kid. I'm going to hold on like this because I'm tall enough to get over the work in this position. I need to think about where to put this hand before I start sawing. The hand that is not holding the saw is the one that can get cut. If this hand is like this, I'm going to cut it. So I'm going to hide it on the other side of the C-clamp. That's a really important concept, to hide your hand. And on the other side of the C-clamp is a very safe place. My hand is hidden, I'm ready to start sawing. I put the saw up against the line and I pull straight up with it to get started. The whole time I'm using the saw, I'm only looking at one place, and that is where the saw meets the wood. So now I see it's right on the line. I'm only gonna look there and go up and down. You'll notice that sawdust is accumulating right on top of that line where I need to be looking. I'm going to blow that sawdust away, but I'm going to be careful in the way that I do it. If I blow straight down, the sawdust blows straight back up at me. I don't want sawdust in my eyes, so I'm gonna blow from the side. That's the safest way to blow away sawdust, no matter what tool you're using. Now my hand is hidden again. I'm gonna go up and down. I'm pushing gently forward while gently twisting the handle. I'm going up and down a lot. Notice also the way that I'm holding the blade. It's vertical. The blade doesn't want it to go like this or like that, or it will get twisted and it will break. Then you have to put in a new blade. So make sure that blade is straight up and down. That is a hard concept for a lot of kids to get, that the blade needs to be straight up and down. And it's worth really thinking about as they're using the saw for the first few times. Hand hidden, up and down. I can keep sawing, blowing away sawdust following that line. I'm only looking at the line. Another beauty of this saw is that if the child gets tired, it's easy to rest in the middle. They can just push it down all the way and let go. The coping saw is one of the few saws that you can let go of when it's in the wood and it's not going to go anywhere. It's a safe place to keep the saw in the middle of a job. I've rested a little bit. I'm ready to keep sawing. I'm gonna keep sawing following this line, but sometimes this happens often when children are doing the work. Oh my gosh, I went off my line. Now, mistakes are fantastic learning opportunities. And in woodworking, it's a very forgiving place to make mistakes. And I really encourage the students I'm working with to embrace the mistakes they make. Some of the best projects that have come out of my shops have been the result of the mistakes the kids have made and the creative solutions they've come up with because of those mistakes. So in this case, it's not bad. I'm just gonna steer back onto the line. I can take that extra bit of wood out another way or I can do something different. I can scoot back and steer back onto the line like this. It depends on which piece of wood I'm gonna keep. If this is the one I care about, well, I have a different job. This is easier to fix because I made too much of that wood in the mistake that I made. Now I'm going to keep sawing. I'm looking only at that line, blowing sawdust away from the side, keeping the blade vertical, pushing gently while I go up and down a lot. As I get to the end, I want to go even more gently with the pushing, or I might get big old splinters when the wood is finished being cut. So, continuing to hide my hand, gently sawing. You saw me come up from the bottom a little bit there. That's the one time I come off from vertical, is at the very end. So I come up 
and I'm leaning back a little bit. It makes for a nicer finish cut. Now that you have a sense of how to use the coping saw, let me show you some techniques to help a child learn to use it without doing the work for them. If the child is holding on like this, you can slip your hand around theirs and pinch your fingers just below their fingers. So they'd be holding on like this, you're coming in underneath. That way you can do the work together. You have to be leaning over the child to be able to do this. If the child is holding on like this, again, you can pinch the same area, putting your hand between their two hands so you can share the job of doing the work. As soon as you get the feeling that they are doing it more on their own, slowly remove your amount of effort so they take over the whole job. If the child that you're working with is too tall for you to lean over easily, this is what I do. I ask them if I can put my hand onto their back like this, and then I reach around and I use the same position I just showed you, pinching below their fingers so we can do it together. But with my hand on their back, it enables us to work in synchrony and it keeps me from losing my balance. There's just one last thing that I want to show you about the coping saw. At times, having the spring be behind the blade is a problem, like when you're making certain kinds of cuts on certain kinds of projects, and you need the spring to be, say, off to the side. To change the position of the spring, you loosen the blade, change this position here, make sure you change the bottom as well, check to make sure the blade isn't twisted, and then grasp it and tighten it, just as you would if you were tightening it after changing the blade. Now, the spring is off to the side of the blade. I just gave you a lot of information in a very short period of time. Don't expect to be a master of the coping saw right away. I make it look easy because I've been doing this for years. Give yourself time to learn to use the tool. Be forgiving of yourself and review this video before you use the coping saw for the first few times so the ideas are fresh in your mind. Now, let's go make some projects. Visit my website, woodworkingwithkids.wordpress.com. There you'll find a photo gallery of projects and of tools and links to my other videos. While you're there, you can send me your comments, ask me questions, make suggestions for future videos. I welcome all of your input. Thanks.